Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zam Crow here, aka Scoop. Back again with my Mount Moon Challenge. Next up is the Psychic Gym, who is led by the Psychic Gym leader, Lady Juvia. Um, first off, this match was 6v6 doubles. I'm new to doubles, so bear with me here. I decided to bring against her Psychic team in a doubles match. I decided to bring Banded Garchomp, Double Dance Lander Asterion, Standard Life Warp Weavile, Standard Banded Scizor, Mega Alakazam, and Specially Defensive Hatron. And looking at her team, she actually brought Latias, Gardevoir, Espeon, Bill Fox, Slowbro, and Meloetta. Gardevoir or Slowbro would be the Mega, or even Latias could be the Mega. Um, I was kind of nervous. I didn't really know what to do. So I just decided to lead out with Garchomp and Lander Therian for double earthquakes. So yeah, let's just go ahead and hop in the battle. Like I said, I led Garchomp and Lander Therian for double hard hitting earthquakes. Which I know my Garchomp can live Lander Therians. And Lander Therian is immune to Garchomps. So I thought it was pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not a doubles player, but this was the rules to their gym, so I came best prepared as I could be. The Meloetta goes for Protect, and Garchomp does not get the uh, Earthquake off on it, but it does a relatively good chunk to the Slowbro, and it looks like I accidentally misclicked to uh, Stone Edge for, for Landers instead of hitting it with an Earthquake also, which is fine. I got a crit, which I don't like an Earthquake, but it did much more than that. Here she switches Slowbro out for her Gemini, who is the Latias, Latias, Os, As, Latias, Latias, not Latios, whatever, the red one. Anyways, Meloetta transforms with the Relic Song, it hits both of us, and I fire off the Stone Edge on the Latias, and Garchomp being the fastest on the field actually goes last thanks to Trick Room. And almost knocks out the Meloetta. Nice recovery, nice recovery. Here I double switch out, switch Landers out to Miami or Heatran, my Heatran, Heatran, however you want to say it. And I also bring in Scizor. I unlock the Scizor. As she opts to go for Relic Song again. And transforms back into the regular form as the Latias reveals Ice Beam. As I switch out the Landers into Heatran, which was perfect for us because it, it literally gives us HP back. Now here I wasn't going to predict any switches because it's just not favorable for me. I'm going to attack what's in front of me in a doubles match because I'm not, I don't know about doubles. And being slower, my Heatran and Scizor both move first and I get the Pursuit off on the Lati, which KOs from the range it was at. It was abandoned anyway, so it probably KO'd regardless. We also got the Toxic off that turn on the Meloetta. And it transforms again, as it did put Scizor to sleep with the Relic Song. Just kind of, it's annoying for sure. Now she brings in the Delphox. I'm gonna switch Heatran to my Lander's Theory, and I'm actually gonna switch out my Scizor for my Alakazam, who is Mega. Not yet Mega, but it is Mega Alakazam. That's what 
what I was trying to say. Relic Song goes off and in. She transforms me in. Del Fox fires off a mystical fire, which would have knocked out Scizor and does a good chunk of damage to our Alakazam and gets the special attack drop. So we're gonna obviously switch Mega Alakazam out before we even Mega Evolve. So he will stay Alakazam and he will not take any kind of hazard damage or any kind of residual damage. Any kind of damage that's not direct damage. Switch back out into Heatran as we go for a Stone Edge on the Bell Fox, which will KO unless it is Sash, and it is not Sash, so it does go down, which is great for us. And the Dazzling Link almost gets the knockout on the Ravish there, but it does not, and does relatively nothing to Heatran. I'm not sure why she went for Dazzling Moon. That toxic damage is starting to rack up though. And she decides to bring in Slowbro again. I thought maybe she wanted to just switch it right back out. Uh, for maybe the Regenerator. But I go for Stone Edge on the Meloetta and the Toxic on the Slowbro. Which is actually phenomenal because Lobro is a nuisance. And she decides to set up the Trick Room again. Which is not too bad. Nice and toxic damage, nice and toxic damage. And she did, finally decides to send out her Espeon. And here we're going to switch out the Guard Chomp and just... We also switch Landers there and out to Weavile. She goes for the stall on Weeva and gets the burn. No. And gets the shadow ball off on the guard chomp. No. No. This is not good for us. Slow bro, slow bro still poison now, which is good. And here I'm just going to go for like a sort of an last ditch ice shard just for damage on the Espeon and switch out my Garchomp to the Landry Stereo. Intimidate's actually useless against these two Pokemon, which is fine. And surprisingly, ice shard does just a, just enough to where I'm satisfied with it on the Espeon. And the Slowbro does knock out the Landry Stereo. Now I'm going to bring in my Hatron and my Scizor, and my Scizor, which is asleep. I'm going to go for BP, hoping I wake up. Because if I can wake up and hit the Espeon with the BP, I'm in really, really, really good position. But, as you can see, I do not wake up. And I get hit with the Scald. Which nearly KOs me, and Heatran gets the Earth Power off on the Espeon, which nearly KOs it. And the Espeon gets the Shadow Ball off on the Scizor, which does in fact KO my Scizor. Now I thought Trick Room was going to end here. I actually thought it did end this turn. The fact that it didn't, didn't is actually a problem 
because I bring in my Mega Alakazam here and Mega Evolve to, you know, attack, to attack. And had I went for Earth Power or Lava Plume even with featuring onto the Espeon instead of attacking the Slowbro, I would have knocked the Espeon out this turn and my Alakazam would have survived this turn. But instead, I go for the Shadow Ball on the Espeon and the Earth Power on the Slowbro. The Slowbro will switch out to Gardevoir. The Gardevoir eats the Earth Power. And the Espeon is slower, so it outspeeds in the Trick Room and knocks out my Mega Alakazam. <sighs> but the Espeon does faint to Life Orb Recoil. And the Dimensions finally, you know, time is now back to normal, whatever. Now here, knowing I outspeed everything, I'm just gonna go for the Bandit Earthquake and try to knock out everything. Knocks out the Hatred, no problem. Knocks out the Guard of War, no problem. And the fat ass slow bro barely lives, no. From this rain, Scotland should be able to knock me out. And it in fact does. We lose a narrow 1-0 to Lady Juvia. The psychic master of the Mount Moon Battle Association. Um, very well played on her part. We come up just short and we do not get our psychic badge this time. But we do have two more opportunities to battle her for that badge. And we'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching.